like I said, I was suspicious going up to the door. I'm just getting ready to knock on the door, see what's really going on. When I knocked on the door, it took a little minute for anybody to come to the door. But even though this was his best friend's house, my boyfriend came to the door. And when he came to the door, his belt buckle was unloose and his pants was unzipped. It was all dark in the front room when he opened the door. And he was looking like, what are you doing here? I'm like, okay, first off, why are you not answering the phone? Why are you not answering my text? Thought you was going to be out of town. Thought you was this, thought you was that. What's really going on? And he was like, Ken, just leave. He's like, go ahead, man, just leave. I mean, this ain't necessary, just leave. And I'm like, what's not necessary? I'm like, first off, I shouldn't be out here looking for you like this or having to search you down. And you know I just lost our child, so this is a difficult time. Like, I need your support. What you mean, don't be doing this and all this other stuff that he was saying? So, lo and behold, I pushed my way in the daggone door. I, sir, I pushed my way in the door. When I pushed my way in the door, he had someone in the bedroom over to the right. And then his best friend's bedroom was over to the left. So he closed the door. I never got to see who was in the bedroom. But I heard his best friend come out and I just started swinging. I just started swinging all over the place on, on my uh, boyfriend at the time. And I just about tore up the dude front room. And, and I felt sorry for that because, I mean, it wasn't his fault. But I just about tore up the man front room. So, my boyfriend pushed me out the door and pushed me down the steps. I just I just lost a baby like one day ago. He pushed me down the steps and he took my keys and he threw them in the yard. I'm out there crying. It's dark. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm abused, really. And he's still in the house with the girl. And I know there was a girl in there because I heard her. And then his best friend was like, you know, Candace, I, I didn't want this to happen, but... He didn't really do anything about it. He just let it all go down like that. So I had to take my behind home and chalk it up and, and just break up with him and leave him alone. After that, I, you know, I wasn't really talking to him. I left it alone. So I was just crying about it to my roommates and to my roommate's friends. Friend. I cried about it to them over and over and over and over and over and over. Until one day, the other roommate, the one that didn't have the friend, she came to me and said, Candace, I'm just going to tell you the truth. The girl that was in the room with Eric, that was... Our other roommate friend that, that's here all the time, that was her. Because you sitting here still walking around and hanging around, talking to her and being with her. And she's not going to tell you that you're looking like a fool, but I'm going to tell you. Welcome back, Stingers. We talk about self-esteem, evolution, rebirth, relationships, self-love, self-worth, and, and, and much more in this channel. And I like to give you guys real-life situations because... You know, I was young once too, and I know a lot of you guys are in the age bracket where you're dealing with similar stories. And you guys know if you've read all of my books from where I come, right? And, you know, this is, this is another situation that bleeds low self-worth, but not just that, you know, some, sometimes you get caught up in situations and you're not thinking properly. You know, I just, I don't want to come on here and sound like I have all the answers and pretend that I've never been through a lot of situations because you guys know better. You read my stories and I'm very open with it. I'm honest with the stories that I tell in my books. I'm honest with the stories that I tell you guys on this channel, the examples that I give you. And, uh, you know, I too was in my 20s and in my 30s. And, you know, this young lady, she she seems to be somewhere between 20s and early 30s. Uh, she says she has roommates, so I'm going to go with more of 20s. And, um, you know, I just, I, I just have a couple of things to say. And I know it's going to offend a lot of you who are in the situation or participating in the situation. The one thing that I never did as a young lady, well, there was a couple of things that I never did within relationships. Never, ever, ever. And I do give thanks to my Saturn being in my seventh house of partnership. And Saturn is really responsible for delaying serious relationships, um, 
about making you extremely cautious, pulling you back and making sure that you don't just jump to conclusions and jump into things. And that is the reason why I've always been extremely cautious within any relationship whatsoever, any relationship. And that's not to say that I haven't, I haven't been in situations where I was irresponsible or I, you know, at the time I just didn't have the mental capability to discern between a lot of different things. And, you know, our brains are fully developed at 25 years old. So, you know, um, around that time or, or beforehand, we, we really don't have that mental capacity. This is why when I see younger people who think they're so grown, they think they know it all. I'm like, listen, your, your brain's like still like <laughs> your brain's not even fully developed. Oh my gosh. Like a lot of these things you just can't put together. Okay. You just can't put them together. And so I've never lived with a man ever. And, um, I never lived with a man and I was never pregnant ever in my life. I never had an oops or none of that. And, um, I was so overly cautious, um, with myself. And apart from that, I never gave out any type of kind of permanent relationship or I never gave so much that was not really earned of me. Um, you know, this young lady, you know, she, her boyfriend was cheating. I'm sure there were all sorts of signals leading up to that. And she was even pregnant by, by him. And sad thing is she just lost the baby the day before. So she's supposed to be in bed, but she's outside looking for him, calling, texting, needing him going to a situation, um, you know, where her instinct said, go to this house. She knew it was going to happen. Your instincts are always right. And she finds out that, you know, he's in the room with somebody else and even throws her out, throws her keys and everything. So this is a new behavior. It's not, it's not like he was this perfect boyfriend, this amazing person who proved that he wanted a serious committed relationship with her because if he did, he would have married her. You know, that's another thing why I was never living with someone like, no, if I'm living with you, we have the same last name and I have license registration on you by the state of New York signed in, in everything. Okay. Notarized and all that stuff. Other than that, there's no pregnancy. There's no, me. I ain't living with you. I'm not doing X, Y, like I'm not doing that. Okay. If you're so serious, go in front of a judge and you make it legal. So then I have legal rights. I have legal rights. And so, um, a lot of you guys, a lot of you men and women are getting into these situations, trying to be these permanent, like adult situations. Like, yeah, I'm 20 something. I'm living with a guy or I'm, we having kids and like, you know, you're not ready for this stuff. It's too much. And when you're young, your emotions are everywhere, everywhere. I was like the most intense person I ever met in my life when I was younger. And now I've kind of come calm down because I, my brain's, you know, at the age where it can discern all these different things. And I, you know, but young individuals, and I know before you get in the comments, some of you, um, you know, my pa parents got married at like 21, 22, and they weren't ready either. They weren't ready either, honey. So I make excuses for them. Um, I, I'm really against that young kind of couple, that young mom. Like I'm not into that at all. I'm not into that whatsoever. I don't promote it. I don't agree with it. And I, I think people should be older. I think they should go through things. They should know what they're doing. They should be completely responsible, be able to take care of themselves, have the mental capacity to uh, withhold certain circumstances before they jump into any of these situations. And so, um, you know, while I feel sad for her, I think it was just, it was too much. And she wasn't following her instincts. She was not vetting properly she was not saying oh you want sex and all that okay well let's go to the let's go to the courthouse and i guarantee you he wouldn't have most men will not they're like oh i'm ready for that oh really but you're ready for sex which is very serious it opens you up to diseases pregnancy your body changes your dna changes like that's very serious everybody's so casual about it and like i don't understand that part either uh, but, um, and, and then talking about bringing a whole life into the world and all that, that's, 
there's nothing casual about any of this stuff. And you, you talk to young people and they're just like, oh, it's okay. Like, no, none of that's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. And 99% of the time they regret it. A lot of people don't talk about it, uh, their regrets, and they try and hide it. But I know better. I know better. And so we talk about self-worth in this and, um, you know, bringing up demanding marriage and, and things like that and not having sex with people um, and, and not living with them and not engaging in behavior that will lead you to going outside your home after you just had a huge surgery. Like, you know, um, a miscarriage is such a huge thing. Your body goes through so many things. It's not, you know, an abortion is a huge thing. I don't know why people talk about it. Like it's such a small thing, like your body, your hormones, this young lady's hormones were out of control. You know, she's supposed to be in bed recovering, but she's not. Her mind is on some freaking man. And she's out in the dark, banging on the door and doing all this, this outlandish behavior for somebody who does not want you. They do not want you. Okay. And a lot of you guys are fighting back and forth. You're on the social media. You're cussing people out. You're, you're either fighting other women. You're yelling at someone or, you know, even men too. You're, you're on the phone. You're yelling, begging for a relationship, demanding all this stuff. And it's just like, they don't want you. Okay. And I understand that that's extremely painful for a lot of you guys, depending on how you were raised, depending on how you're caring for yourself. It's extremely challenging to just let something go. It is, it is, it really is. And you're out thinking that yelling and, and approaching somebody who's in the house and all that's going to change. Like that's what his behavior has been like that. And what she's not telling is that he's, that's probably not the first time. And that he's pushed her out the door, thrown her keys. If he has the capacity to do that, that night he's been doing it, okay? He's been doing it. And, um, you know, the best that she can do is walk away. The best that all of you guys can do is walk away. You know, you're not even, you're not, most of you aren't even married to these people. And you have more problems with just like trying to fight for a relationship. That's another thing that I never did. I never tried to fight for a relationship. I never did. If someone wanted another woman, I've never been cheated on. I told you guys this. I know a lot of people get into my comments and they're like, well, you probably have. You just didn't know. Like, I I never attracted a cheater. Period. I don't attract them. Okay? And so, while that never has happened, it's not like I haven't been played out before. Okay? So, I know what it's like for somebody to be like, oh, well, now I like another person. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like... Go and like that other person. Go and like them. I'm not coming to your house. I'm not saying, why don't you like me? I'm not asking questions. I'm not asking you why. I'm not trying to figure out all this shit in that, you know. Go and like them. Go and be with them, okay? It takes a powerful light within just to sit with that. Sit with that, whatever it is, whatever you, you whatever word you've given that feeling, and just just walk in the other direction, and to be kind to yourself and love yourself, care about yourself. I'm going to use that word because a lot of people say love yourself, which is true. But I know it's kind of a cliche now. But um, to care enough about yourself to just walk the other way. Okay? When somebody shows you this stuff, some of you are still fighting. I know you are. I see the most outrageous comments under my videos and it's so heartbreaking. It's like, why are you still even talking about this person? Why are you talking about them? Why are you waiting for them? They don't want you. They don't. They don't want you. And that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. There does, it doesn't mean that. That's the mistake you guys make. All putting the blame on yourself. Okay? You are fabulous regardless. None of, none of the someone not wanting you or walking away takes away from all your life's accomplishments. Like... You know, who I am right now, all of the things that I've accomplished, all of the work that I've done on myself, if someone decides that they don't want to be with, it, with me anymore, that doesn't diminish who I am. I'm still the same person. That's the hardest thing for many of you to, to get to grasp because internally you think that you are worthless because they did something and they walked away. The best thing this young lady and many of you can do for yourself 
is just walk away. She should not have gone to his house. She should not have tried to argue with him. She should not have done that. And yes, all the other stuff is in the past. So she just has to forgive herself. And, and you know what? I hate to say this. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But the best thing, one of the best things that ever happened to her is that child not, not coming to the physical life because that would have been the wrong father, honey. And I hope that she heals a hundred percent before stepping in, into that next relationship and, you know, um, bringing a, a child into the world where two parents are number one, have, have wanted, wanted that situation and asked for that situation and are prepared for that situation, has a home for that situation. And I listened to what she said. He got roommates. She got roommates. They, a baby. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, guys, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. I'll see you at ScorpioSunScorpionMoon.com where you can purchase all of my audiobooks. Um, my newest book, Nobody Can Hurt Me, A Scorpio's Guide to um, Healing with Affirmations is extremely important because I use affirmations nonstop. You know, um, this week I've been going through a lot of challenging, a lot of challenging situations. And I kid you not, if I had not adapted my affirmations over a decade ago, I don't, I really don't know how I would get through it. Um, you know, transforming my subconscious into, uh, the powerful, um, tool, you know, that it is today, um, you know, really is, is, is so prominent in my self-worth journey it is like at the top of the list talking to yourself and knowing that you are worthy and you're good enough okay not just saying it but having it translate to knowing knowing that you know having those beliefs and, the, and those values forces you to make different decisions okay forces you to make different decisions automatically your mind is like oh no this is not good enough for us absolutely not and you walk off you know people laughed at me when I said you know if I were in a restaurant and a guy was asking me to pay half I would just get up and walk out and there would be no I'm not a Leo it wouldn't be some grand like I'm gonna leave like none of that none I would just excuse myself push my chair back grab my cute little purse and just walk out the walk out the restaurant and leave that's it I'm a nice quiet movement I'm a Scorpio never it's never dramatic with me it's never dramatic with me. I would just leave. There would never be another conversation again ever in life or death, guys. And that surprises you, but it doesn't surprise me because I've trained myself better. So you can get my paperback books on the website or at your local bookshop. You can just ask and they most likely will be able to order it for you. Um, if you live in another country, many of you guys do, you can order the audio versions. This particular book, my newest book, is better on audio version. Trust me, you don't want to sit there. I mean, you can read it, but it's not even available on paperback. <laughs> anyway, but you just want to sit with it and let me let me talk you through it. Trust me, it is fabulous. Uh, my whole shop is 25% off by using the code Scorpio Season. Uh, Scorpio season ends what the 22nd so you'll be able to get 25% off your favorite jewelry your books and all that good stuff and um, you can watch my exclusive videos my shop is going on hiatus soon but I still have uh, so many videos for you guys so many things so many lessons for you guys already set up in place so keep looking out for those videos if you're here in New York City you guys know you can get my books in Shanti bookshop on east 14th street if you if you want the paperbacks and i think that's it guys i'll see you soon Mwah.